warm welcome to all our viewers, today, we present a valuable resource tailored specifically for individuals gearing up for the Assistant Director DGCA exam conducted by UPSC. This session is crafted with you in mind, with the aim of providing insights and strategies that will prove beneficial in your preparation journey. As we delve into the intricacies of the exam, we'll unravel the art of eliminating incorrect options and share tips garnered from analyzing previous question papers. Let's start our discussion on the Assistant Director DGCA exam by analyzing the previous question paper. As we delve into the questions, we will share videos on related topics that might be crucial for this examination. This will help you to identify patterns, key concepts, and effective strategies to maximize your score. Best wishes to all participants. Let's dive into the discussion and make the most out of our collective efforts. Let's get started. Consider the following statements regarding air traffic controllers. First statement, the ground controllers work on the runway and are responsible for the separation of aircraft and vehicles operations on the ramp, taxiways. This is a false statement. Tower controller or local controller work on the runway. Second statement, the local controller is primarily responsible for the separation of aircraft operating within the airport traffic area and those landing on any of the active runways. This is a correct statement. Third statement, one of the duties of local controllers is to control taxiways lighting systems. False this is the responsibility of ground controller. This question is based on the duties and responsibilities of air traffic control positions. You can expect similar questions. Second question. A flight path parallel to the landing runway in the direction opposite to landing is called Downwind leg is parallel to the landing runway in the direction opposite to landing. The default circuit pattern is left hand. This question is based on the designated positions of aircraft from an aerodrome control tower viewpoint. Third question, 3. Consider the following statements regarding controller duties in Air Route Traffic Control Center. First statement, flight data controller is responsible for assisting the other controllers who actually separate the aircraft. This statement is correct, flight data controller prepares flight progress strips which is used updated by other controllers. Second statement, non-radar controller is responsible to assist the radar controller when separating aircraft appears on the radar display. False, non-radar controller duty is to assist in conflict detection and update the flight progress strips. When radar fails non-radar controller has to assume the responsibility of control separation of non-radar traffic. Third statement, radar controller is responsible to separate participating aircraft using a radar-derived display. This statement is correct, this question is based on the duties and responsibilities of air traffic control positions, radar procedural controller. You can expect similar questions, fourth question. Air traffic clearance required for IFR VFR flights operating in which airspace? The correct answer is Class A, Class B. In Class E airspace, VFR traffic are not subject to air traffic clearance requirement. This question is based on the airspace classification in India. Fifth question An aircraft desiring to enter the other airspace must 1. Be equipped with a two way radio and obtain an ATC clearance. 2. File a flight plan. 3. Be equipped with an altitude reporting transponder. This question was dropped by UPSC, as it was not specific. DFR flights are not subject to air traffic control clearances to radio communication requirement in Class E, FG airspace. IFR flights are not subject to air traffic clearances two-way radio communication requirement in uncontrolled airspace Class FG. This question is based on the airspace classification, carriage of transponder flight plan requirements. Sixth question, at selected controlled airports where appropriate data have been published. Air traffic controllers may use an expanded procedure whereby they may clear a pilot to land and hold short of an intersecting runway, an intersecting taxiway, or some other designated point on runway. This operation is called? Land and hold short operations at small airports with limited base base necessitate meticulous coordination between air traffic control and pilots. In this scenario, pilots receive instructions to hold on the runway, clear of the link taxiway, until the departing aircraft enters the runway via the apron link. 
This procedure enhances the efficient use of limited space and ensures safe aircraft movements. Seventh question. In aviation, a touch-and-go landing is a common maneuver during flight training for fixed-wing aircraft. This maneuver involves landing on a runway and taking off again without coming to a full stop, allowing pilots to practice both landing and takeoff procedures in a continuous sequence. Eighth question. Consider the following statements regarding ATS airspace in India. 1. Designated airspace within controlled airspace is classified as Class A. False Indian airspace are classified as Class C, D, E, F, G. 2. Designated airspace within air traffic service route segment outside controlled airspace is classified as Class F. True, advisory airspace. 3. Airspace outside air traffic service route segment and outside controlled airspace is classified as Class G. True, Class G airspace is uncontrolled airspace and classified as flight information service. Ninth question, it is based on the objectives of air traffic services. To prevent collision between aircraft, to expedite and maintain on orderly flow of air traffic. To notify appropriate organizations regarding aircraft in need of search and rescue aid, and assist such organizations as required. Tenth question, it is based on abbreviations used in aviation. ARTCC stands for Air Route Traffic Control Centers, TRACON stands for Terminal Radar Approach Control, MARSA stands for Military Authority Assumes Responsibility for Separation of Aircraft. Eleventh question, it is a numerical based on the radar basic. If a radar system with an unambiguous range of 100 km and a bandwidth of 0.5 MHz, what is the required pulse repetition frequency? The PRF is calculated by dividing the speed of light by twice the maximum unambiguous range. So, the required pulse repetition frequency for the radar system is 1500 Hz. Twelfth question. Which one of the following is a computer system used as a backup for airport surveillance radar? Beacon Data Acquisition and Display System A system for transmitting aircraft beacon information received by a secondary surveillance radar through telephone lines to a remote display includes a digitizer connected to the radar for preparing a serial file of data records containing position and identification information of the beacons detected by each sweep of the radar. Thirteenth question. It is based on the airport surveillance radar. ASR-9, ASR-9 was the first airport surveillance radar system to display air traffic and weather conditions simultaneously. It consists of two electronic subsystems, a primary surveillance radar and a secondary surveillance radar, sometimes called the beacon. The ASR-9 is mainly intended to monitor and track aircraft below 25,000 feet and within 60 nautical miles from the airport of operation. The ASR-9 utilized a dual-beam antenna, a dual-channel antenna, a linear-wide range receiver and digital processing equipment. The ASR-11 is an upgraded, advanced version of the previous ASR-9 radar, thus statement 2 is incorrect. Precision Runway Monitor, PRM, a specialized secondary surveillance radar system for monitoring of aircraft conducting simultaneous independent instrument approaches to parallel runways spaced less than 1525 meter but not less than 1035 meter apart. Fourteenth question, consider the following statements regarding enhanced backup surveillance. Enhanced backup surveillance system replaced the direct access radar channel system, which was used as the backup system at domestic air traffic control. Centers. It uses components from the microprocessor on route automated radar tracking system application to provide backup radar data processing services. It doesn't have the functionality of the primary radar system including automated flight data processing capability. Thus statement 2 is incorrect. Enhanced backup surveillance system replaces hardware and software systems that presently provide backup radar data processing services. It provides surveillance services and weather information for controllers in the event the primary host computer system fails or is shut down for maintenance. It also provides greater speed and adds safety features that were not available with the equipment it is replacing. Fifteenth question, data acquisition subsystem is a peripheral device that receives raw radar data from the primary surveillance radar system. It is a device that receives beacon-derived information from the secondary surveillance system. It is composed of two different subsystems, Radar Data Acquisition System and Beacon Data Acquisition System, 
Thus all three statements are correct. 16th question, sensitivity time control, also known as swept gain control, is a system used to attenuate the very strong signals returned from nearby ground clutter targets in the first few range gates of a radar receiver. Without this attenuation, the receiver would routinely saturate due to the strong signals. This is used in air traffic control systems and has an influence on the shape of the elevation pattern of the surveillance antenna. Thus, statement 1-2 are correct. 17th question, moving target detection is important for removing clutter from the radar image. In ATC, the targets are moving, so the easiest approach is to eliminate all clutter which is static or which does not match the expected size or behavior of an aircraft, moving target detection is upgraded version of moving target indication system. It is used to mitigate blind speed, tangential course, and precipitation display problem in moving target indicator-based radar systems, ASR-11 radar has a digital moving target detection processor which uses Doppler radar and a clutter map giving advanced ability to eliminate ground and weather clutter and track targets. It is theoretically capable of tracking a maximum of 700 aircraft simultaneously. Thus statement 1-2 are correct. In a moving target detection system, the reflected energy from radar signals is processed and stored in what is often referred to as a range bin or range cell. This is a storage unit that corresponds to a specific range or distance from the radar antenna. The radar system divides the entire range of distances into discrete bins or cells, and the reflected energy from each target is allocated to the corresponding range bin. The statement 3 states the energy is stored is incorrect it is fed to the various filters like Doppler filter, zero velocity filter, constant false alarm rate dot filter clutter map subtraction filter thereafter post-processing the information about moving targets. Such as their positions, speeds, and other relevant details, is continuously updates and stores in RAM. This allows for real-time processing and quick retrieval of data for display on the radar screen. RAM is well suited for this purpose as it provides fast read and write speeds, enabling the system to handle the dynamic and rapidly changing nature of air traffic scenarios. 18th question, moving target indicator radar uses the Doppler effect to distinguish between stationary and moving targets by comparing the phase and amplitude of received signals to a reference signal. This allows it to filter out clutter from stationary objects. Thus with the use of moving target indicator radar the stationary targets are filtered out using phase comparison technique. Thus statement 1-3 are correct. 19th question, the user request evaluation tool is a decision support tool for en-route controllers. It displays electronic flight information in both a graphical and a tabular display. It operates in the background, monitoring aircraft progress and correlating it with stored flight plan information. It provides capabilities in terms of an automated conflict probe that projects potential conflicts up to 20 minutes in the future, checks to determine that clearances are conflict-free, and allows for trial planning of route amendments to check for potential conflicts. Thus statement 1-2 are correct. 20th question. Traffic Information Service is the broadcast of transponder-based mode C or mode S traffic information derived from ATC ground-based surveillance systems. TISB provides ADS-B equipped aircraft with a more complete picture of surrounding traffic, whereas Traffic Alert and Collision Avoidance System TCAS following the identification of potential collisions, automatically negotiates a mutual avoidance maneuver between the two or more conflicting aircraft. Thus Statement 1, 2, 4 are correct. 21st Question, It is based on visual ground signals. A horizontal red square panel with one yellow diagonal when displayed in a signal area indicates that owing to the bad state of the maneuvering area, or for any other reason, special precautions must be observed in approaching to land or in landing. 22nd question. An ATS route is a specified route designed for channeling the flow of air traffic as necessary for the management of air traffic operations. 23rd question. Remotely piloted aircraft, RPA an unmanned aircraft which is piloted from a remote pilot station, as per the Article 8 of Convention on International Civil Aviation, on pilotless aircraft, 
no aircraft capable of being flown without a pilot shall be flown without a pilot over the territory of a contracting state without special authorization by that state and in accordance with the terms of such authorization. Each contracting state undertakes to ensure that the flight of such aircraft without a pilot in regions open to civil aircraft shall be so controlled as to obviate danger to civil aircraft, RPA shall not be operated over the high seas without prior coordination with the appropriate airport traffic services, ATS, authority. RPAS shall meet the performance and equipment carriage requirements for the specific airspace in which the flight is to operate, thus statement 1 is incorrect, 24th. Question, number of longitudinal strips of uniform dimensions required for 45-meter width of runway is 12, number of longitudinal strips required for 23-meter width of runway is 6 and for a 30-meter runway is 8. 25th question, if runway friction coefficient is 0.4, then estimated surface friction is good, for friction coefficient between 0.35 to 0.3 surface friction is medium. For friction coefficient below 0.25 to 0.3 surface friction is poor. Thus only statement 1-2 are correct. Thank you for joining me in this video. We will discuss the remianing questions in our next video. Until then, stay curious and stay connected. See you in the next video.